Kia ora, everyone, and thank you very much for joining me. I am Charlotte Yvette. I am the Government Relations Leader for Chartered Accountants Australia and New Zealand. Today, I am very thankful to be speaking to Nick Skeets. Nick is the Director and Co-Founder of Catapult Leadership, and we're going to be speaking about leadership in tough times. Um, welcome, Nick, and thank you for joining us today. I really appreciate it. No worries. Um, so, um, like I've alluded to earlier, and I think it's pretty obvious, our experience with, with our members at Chartered Accountants Australia New Zealand and certainly beyond is that there is a lot of leadership anxiety out there at the moment. Mm. What, what should leaders be doing now? What should their focus be on in these chaotic times? Mm. Well, I mean, one of the first things I've been talking to people about is to relieve that kind of anxiety. One of the key things is to to recognize that there's no right way uh, or no right answer to leading in this environment because uh, it hasn't happened before. It's, there's no manual there. Um, so giving up that there should be a right way or right answer is a, is, is a really crucial first step to, to really being less stressed about um, leading in this time because you're going to try some things. Some things will work, some things won't. And that's why we, we kind of call it, call it the leadership playbook during this time because you're going to have some plays, you're going to try, some will work, some won't. Um, but also the other kind of uh, global kind of message I would be saying to people is leading with what we call a cool head and a warm heart. Uh, and I think that's really important um, to, to, to lead that way. And uh, part of that, that cool head is really um, trying to make sure you decipher what's important, what's factual versus assumptions, really working on what it is that you can control and influence not getting sidetracked by things that are in your area of concern, but you can have no control or influence over. So as a leader yourself working on those things and having your people work on those things is you know, a really kind of core part of, uh, of having um, a cool head. Um, and uh, you know, I think the, the other thing really for cool head for a leader at the moment is making sure that you kind of frame what the challenge is for your organization um, or your team, or whatever level it might be, um, because how you frame it is really going to be uh, the nucleus of how people respond. Um, so you could, you could, for example, frame a, a situation as, how do we get through this? How do we survive and, and minimize the damage through this period? That's one way of framing the challenge. Another way could be framing it, how do we get through this and end up on the other side smarter, sharper, with a more compelling offer to our, our clients or customers. So whatever frame it is, you want to be thinking, what way of framing this for myself and for the people I lead is going to give ambition and energy as opposed to kind of feeling over, overwhelming. Well, that's absolutely true. And something you and I spoke about before we jumped on this call was just in terms of um, your, your mood. So and, and talking about how you frame mm -hmm. it, you as a leader, um, your mood and the contagion so you can yeah. either say, oh, you know, I'm, I'm really stressed and uncertain and I, I don't think we're going to get through this. Or you can project a calm, um, yeah. confident and, and reassuring mood. And we spoke about an example of that being yeah. our prime minister. Um, can you, can you talk a bit about moods and contagion in sure. terms of leadership? Well, as you know, often as, as leaders, we think about what do we need to do in a situation? And we kind of focus on, on doing, which is important. But actually, what is really important is managing your emotional contagion, uh, who, who you're being, because you are incredibly contagious right now. And, what, and your mood is more powerful than actually what you say and it could be your actions. You know, so being calm, positive, confident, forward-looking you know, is, is really important as opposed to being anxious or uh, you know, uh, scared, worried, um, or even worse is probably being varying your emotional mood from one day to the next because people don't know how to be with you because you know what mood is that person going to be in so really bringing conscious management to your mood is really really important and you mentioned the prime minister jacinda ardern there the, uh, she really uh exhibited i think the other day when i watched her when the level four came up she was really um did lead with that cool head and the warm heart she was very straight up about what the situation was she didn't actually try and uh, couch that in any way, but other than, you know, if, if we don't do this, this is the default future. If we don't do this, the default future is 10 to 1,000 people are gonna die. Now we don't want that, so what do we need to do is this. But then she also did that with that warm heart and, com and, and compassion and care. So she's a very good example 
of someone I think who's leading from that cool head, you know, warm heart. And, uh, you know, this is something actually we, we do know, um, having done lots of research for our 2017 book, we did Leaders Like You. We actually researched what it is that people want in their leaders in New Zealand. But it, I, you know, I really believe that there's a close association to what people would look for in leaders in Australia. And the three things that came out through that, talking to thousands of Kiwis about it, was straight up. People actually want information, be straight, and tell things as they are. But the second part is being personable. So actually, as you tell things as they are, be warm, be connected, be friendly. Um, and the third thing people want is can do in their leaders, the sense that you are going to work and trying to do stuff on that which you can control and influence. So those three things are really, really important. Um, can do straight up and personable. And they were also useful navigations to think, well, actually, if that's what people are looking for, then I've got, I've got a license to actually tell things as they are, but be warm and connected and show that I'm in action doing what I can to, to, to navigate through this period. Mm. Absolutely. And I think you're right, your book, Leaders Like You, um, which was that published in 2017? So it's pretty mm -hmm. recent. Yeah. yeah. Um, and just what, what Kiwis look for in leaders. But in my experience, Australians and, and New Zealanders mm. want the same sort of thing. So straight up, personable and can do. And again, um, my reading of Jacinda Ardern and the various um, interviews that she's done, which are daily over the stressful period is, is that she's given great examples of all of those things. Um, you're right. She's been clear and decisive. If this doesn't happen, then this will happen, but also a, a lot of warmth and empathy to your point mm. about warm heart before, like talking about yeah. grandparents, not being able to see their grandchildren and really empathizing with people. Yeah, so, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's a, yeah. a great one for leaders. Um, just in terms of the going back to the research that you did after the GFC, so that was called Mining the Diamonds, is that right? Mining the Diamonds, ge uh, Leadership Gems from the Last Recession. Yeah. So incredibly relevant now. And my understanding is that that is available for download for yeah. free from your website. Yeah, yeah oh. catapult.co.nz. We okay. have a COVID-19 page called COVID-19 Leadership Playbook. And right. so that, that report will just look like that is available you can download it and um and what we've done in there is so we we basically 70 organizations large small medium size right. and we interviewed their leaders and said you know what did you learn coming through the gfc crisis so that we can be better prepared for the next crisis yep. so there's some really fantastic um research in there about what what are the most important lessons people learned and from, what were they well um, you know thinking strategically uh, yep. was was probably about 32 percent of people said you know thinking strategically and actually yep. very interestingly we kind of talked about uh, uh, the the recession actually sl snapped people out of their we call it their, their leadership lazy boy <laughs> because yep. actually gave them permission to think more strategically about their position and, and their situation so that was really important um the thing we just talked about before managing their mood was you know really uh important yep. um which is hard. Can I just stop you there and yeah. say, um, and you're in a situation as a leader, like I think something like 97% of New Zealand businesses, SMEs, so small and medium entities. So cash flow is huge for them. And many of them have had to shut down. So cash flow has stopped. There's assistance from the government, but obviously it's not going to be for many of them what they were earning before. So there's a lot of personal um, and organizational stress out there. So managing your mood is not easy. You need to be very mindful about it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I mean, people are tired and stressed out, right? So, you know, sometimes our judgment can can err sometimes in that situation. Yeah. But it is really about that conscious management, you know. And one of the things I'd say is that when you're with your people, a great way to get into that space is ask this question: Who do I need to be for people right now? Who do I need to be for people right now? That gets you out of your head and into their world. Mm -hmm. Because it, it, what's the contagion <laughs> I want to communicate? So you can be straight up and saying, look, you know, this is a really stressful time. It's an uncertain time. I'm yeah. feeling that as well. But here's where I'm at. Actually, yeah. And that's your warm yeah. heart, isn't it? That's, that that's you spoke you're yeah. you know, and you're, you're, you're being open about you, you're finding it that way too. But then you can actually choose and how you're going to be about it. So look, we're going to get through this. And another really kind of key point actually from that research was a lot of the leaders said what was really important was actually involving people in the how to get through this very early on, about 25, 26% said, look, you know, getting people on saying, look, 
we're going to get through this. That's our ambition. We're going to get through this, but actually we're not sure how, but we want to get your ideas. Yeah. And that's really important because in this time when people are feeling they've got no control, actually asking people to contribute ideas. Get their buy-in. And they, and they can do that yeah. virtually, yeah. right? And, you yeah. know, it's interesting to see who in the who in the organization team steps up with ideas, right? Yeah. That's, that's interesting too. But it gives people a sense of being on the field of play rather than observing. So that's really kind of key um, key as well. Okay. And I think, you know, um, some of the other things that research, we basically we've got some recommendations in that for 2020. And it comes down to four areas of leadership, you know, thinking strategic leadership, operational leadership, people leadership, and personal leadership. Okay. Part of it is thinking about your strategic leadership, you know, as, as if you're running a business or your partner in, in, in a business, small or big, the strategic leadership question you've been asking right now is, is our offer compelling? Um, and, you know, in, in this new world that's going to be coming up, you know, and, and, and how do we, if it is compelling, that's, that's great. How do we maybe market it more or anything we need to add to it? Sometimes you might be thinking, actually, in this new world, maybe our offer is not as compelling as it was in the old world. What do we need to do differently? A really kind of that's the kind of strategic leadership. And so because, are we offering the right things? Yeah, are we offering the right things? And yeah. is our ambition where we want to be in 10 years that we had in our vision or our, our goals, are they still relevant? And I think, you know, that's really important to you go back to what we'd call your kind of organizational backbone principles when you're thinking about strategic leadership, your vision, you know, where mm -hmm. do we want to be, our ambition, our purpose. Yep. Now, your purpose is why your value proposition really and yep. your values and you know if you, you know, our, if our purpose is the difference we make to our customers is that still relevant in yep. this post world right okay uh, so like for chartered accountants australia and new zealand our purpose is to support our members so we sort of need to go back and say are we supporting our members and then our members who are all sorts of businesses small and medium-sized practices or whatever their purpose is to support their clients and are they, are they doing it and are they doing it effectively so yeah. that's yeah okay go it's back great to stand, it's great to stand in your purpose and say how does that help us manage through this right now as well as your values too good organizational values uh, you know, I mentioned uh, you know, if, if before with uh, in another interview, if you, if you have a value of, uh, say, innovation, well, stand in that value as you navigate through this time. Well, if we say we value innovation, let's think creatively, how do we get through this? Or what are the organizational values can actually give you some, some direction, some st strategic touchstones? Okay. So, you know, that's the first kind of conversation as a leader to think strategically, you know, is what we're offering still relevant? How can we make it more compelling? And you know, and and the cool head is also not really suddenly just knee-jerk reactions too, right? I mean, uh, I was just listening to um, uh, a, a video from an investment company, and they were talking about investors you know, wanting should I withdraw my funds or what should I do? And and their advice was, look, if nothing's compelling's change in your horizon, in your investment horizon, in your risk horizon you know, why would you change? You know, uh, stay the course, reap the rewards, and that. That, you know, so you want to be thinking about with your company. Besides what's happening, has anything fundamentally changed for our for our business and what we offer in the market? And that's a really good study to have a look at. Okay. Then you'd have a look operationally because then you'd say, okay, well, how could we? Even if we just kind of focus on our core offering, how do we do that more efficiently? How do we do that more effectively? But you okay. want to do that after strategic leadership conversation. And then going to the operational leadership, obviously in New Zealand now and Australia, I'm sure is not far behind. We've moved to a completely online working environment for those of us still able to work. So that's where you'd put in the, those sort of practical operational things. So at um, Chartered Accountants Australia, New Zealand, we education's a big part of our offering. Um, much of it's been face to face. So we've had to pivot now mm -hmm. to offering that and providing that value to our members by doing it online. Mm -hmm. And um, that's where the innovation comes in as well. And it's, yeah, that's right. And, you know, a lot of times this kind of crisis really challenges your assumptions about how you can do things, right? Maybe there's an assumption that we always had to do things face to face and we can't do it in a virtual way. But actually, you know, the, these kind of things challenge the assumptions that you've lived with as an organization. And inside of that, that challenge, there's opportunity, uh, opportunity as, as well. And I think, you know, also, I think really importantly for organizations is to really think around it's kind of like when you get, to the other side of this, when you look back as a leader, as an organization, I think a really great thing is how do we behave? How do I behave with my people? How, how do we as an organization 
provide uh, behave with our suppliers and our customers. And I think you want to look back and think we behave in an honourable way. New Zealand's a very small country. Uh, Australia's bigger. But, uh, you know, you still want to be able to think you behave in a way that I think is uh, you know, has integrity around Absolutely. how you interact with people. So yeah. uh, that's a really good kind of a question. Standing in the future, <laughs> looking back, yeah. how, do you, how do you want to say we were during this time? Right? Yeah, because um, um, to your, your point, and I know you're going to move on to the other levels of, um, of leadership. We've talked about strategic and operational, but before you do... Um, so you want your great talent is hard to find mm. at the best of times. So you may not be able to pay your employees a hundred percent all the um, throughout the time. You may have to work out some different arrangements, but you you want them to be there and, and on your side and ready to pick up the slack when we get out of this and the economy rebounds. So how you behave um, has big implications as to whether you you have the um, you have the bench strength to be able to That's do that right. when things pick yeah. up. Yeah, yeah, treat people well, I think is, you know, key, you know, um, yeah. Yeah, and it does start, yeah, the, the people leadership comes in there, doesn't it? I mean, how do you lead people? And I think one of the key things that we know, we do a lot of work with organisations going through change, and this is a massive change. And I think sometimes we think everyone's going through a change at the same time. Yeah. But what we do know is that people really personalise change. If you've got five people in your organization, if you've got 50, 100 people, there's actually five different changes going on, 15 or 100, because people go through change at different paces and different spaces. So you've really got to customize how you work with people. And that is really just making time to be one-on-one -on -one with them. How are you thinking? What are you feeling? What are your concerns personally, professionally? And the important thing there is, you know, you can't provide the answers to, the, to that, but and that's less important than actually empathizing and finding out what's going on for them. Uh, you know, and, and no one's going to resent you doing, doing that. But if you think that you can have one, you want managing one change for people, that's, 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 uh, that's not going to work for you. You've got to be thinking everyone's going through change in a different way. And I've got to customize how I relate to them. Yeah. Mm. So, and that's a good way, you know, so you've said there is the strategic leadership. So that's the top level. Look at that first. And yeah. then the operational leadership, um, you know, how do we actually make that happen? How do we deliver? Now mm. you're talking about the, the people leadership, that third level, how yeah. to take people along with you. Yeah. So personalize, um, have one-to-one -one conversations with your team. Because as individuals, especially when we're stressed, that's what we want. Someone to talk to, someone to, to listen to us. Yeah. Um, so personalizing it. Also, something interesting you said to me before was about um, if you have nothing to say, then say uh -huh. so. Because, um, and in my experience, when there's an absence of, of leadership or an absence of something to say, people will make up their own narrative. You're right. Yeah. Um, so, well, that, from that research we did from the last recession, 20% of respondents said communicating regularly and openly and candidly about what was going on was their most important lesson. 10% mm -hmm. of organizations said it's what they should have done more of. Yeah. And, you're, and you're dead right. And uh, no news is news in itself, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> in the absence of a void, people will fill it up and they will fill it up with a lot of noise and a lot of misinformation that's out there. So if yeah. you come in even a daily and go, hey, there's, there's no update here of any substance, but just want to let you know that, then that's, mm -hmm. that's a communication of value in itself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The classic example of when someone leaves an organization suddenly um, and they see an, an announcement made like, you know, Charlotte has left to do X or Y or whatever, you know, a very valid reason, people will, will start making up stories oh. and, mm. and shape their own narrative. So. Well, actually, that's how we do make sense of the world, right? We, we, we make sense of the world through stories. Yeah. <laughs> so if you ain't telling the story, they go somewhere else to, to make that, that story happen. Yeah, yeah, and quite often the real story is actually just not that interesting. So it's better to come yeah. out with it and, and, right. and front foot it. Yeah, yeah. That's right. great. So um, so we've done strategic, operational, people leadership, and then what's the fourth level of well, leadership? Well, that's, that's, that, that's a personal leadership. Okay. Um, and again, one of the interesting things in that research we did ask from the last recession was, how have you changed as, re as the result of, of that recession? And uh, you know, the vast majority said, actually, it was a really good experience on the other side <laughs> yeah. because actually they've grown more confident um, around their leadership. They had moved into 
things strategic where before they had been in their lazy boy just coasting along. They had learned the importance of having um, difficult conversations, but with empathy and, and, and warmth. So there's actually, there is opportunity to, to, to grow in, in this time. And so it's a good opportunity for self-reflection as well. So, uh, so there's good news inside of that. We may not feel like it right now, but you know, and that's why I called it mining the diamonds, right? Because diamonds come as a result of intense pressure. Yeah. Uh, people are under intense pressure right now, but there are, you know, you may, may come out of this stronger. But also, um, I think the other the thing around uh, that personal leadership as well um, is, you know, how do you look after yourself? What are some practices? Because we talked about people being under under pressure, and I think if you can find a a practice that works for you, where you can actually uh, remove yourself from the, the noise and the pressure. Um, you know, uh, something I've, I've been doing is I just, I don't listen to the, mu the, the news first thing when I get up, I, I put on and I listen to music for 45 minutes and, and as, I, as I potter around. Yeah. And then I don't engage in the news during the day, maybe five or six o'clock I, I will, but because then that gives me time to actually get in and do the business. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the, you know, during this time too, as a leader, sometimes you may feel that you need to have that open door policy. Mm -hmm. The downside of that is that you won't get stuff done. Yeah. Uh, we would advocate more being, I've got an open door between, well, an, an open Zoom or an open Skype or an open telephone line between a nine. Virtual and, door. Okay. A virtual door between nine and 10 and 10.30 and then between four and 5.30. Okay. Because if you don't, your whole day is just going to be interrupted by, have you got a minute? I'm thinking of this, what, whatever. So you do want to actually have some discipline around that because you want to be working on stuff, not get, not get distracted as well. So that, that, that's a good way of you know, leading yourself personally as well as having some kind of disciplines around things. Mm. Okay. That's really great practical advice. I think, mm. you know, the first part you're saying you get up in the morning, don't listen to the news, but um, you'll listen to some music. And for someone else that might be, you know, get out and get that, piece of exercise that we're allowed to do on our own so go out and hit the roads go for a run or go for a walk or take your dog for a walk clear your head and then um, set aside specific periods of time where you have a virtual open door for, yeah. for your team and don't feel bad about that you're having that time to yourself because actually that that's really really important time it's an investment of time not a cost of time okay absolutely well um nick you've certainly given us lots to think about um, do you have anything else to, to add or any other suggestions before we, we sign off? Um, I, not particularly over what we've, we've talked, uh, talked about. Um, but, you know, if you do, the other thing is to find somebody that you can talk to. Um, it could be the dog. That's fine. <laughs> My, uh, my dog's a great listener. Yeah, great listener. <laughs> Never answers back. And there's, there's other, I mean, I do know there's things like um, the New Zealand um, Regional Business Network is having vouchers where you can, where you can actually access up to $5,000 worth of funding, and they fund it totally, to access a service like we're, we're one of the service providers okay. for that. So you can get 5000 bucks and you can spend it on coaching, one-on-one -on -one or team coaching. Um, so that you should access things like that as well. So you don't have to go through it by yourself. So that's the regional business network scheme. So uh, who's that available to Nick? That's available mainly to small and medium sized businesses. Which so is most run, of our businesses in New Zealand and Australia. Yeah. Well, yeah. And it's run through like in Wellington, it's Wellington, New Zealand. Um, you get in contact with them. The advisor will listen to what your needs are and then partner you up with a, um, with a provider. Um, AT, which is the Auckland uh, Economic Development Agency. There's ones in Christchurch. The, you know, and there's all over, all over the country, big Taranaki. You want to get in contact with the Economic Development Agency there and see what funding is available, um, because you know there's some really great providers who can actually partner partner you and be a be a sounding board through this, and it's 100 percent subsidized by by the government up to five oh, that's fantastic yeah. yeah i also know um nzte so new zealand trade and enterprise have made at this point right at filming four million dollars of their operational budget um yeah. available for a similar sort of uh, i think that's that i think that's where that money is because it comes okay, through NZTE and okay. then through the economic development agency so okay yeah. well that's so, yeah, really great yeah. advice yeah yeah, right. yeah. and you know, we on our website um COVID-19, a leaders, leadership playbook, we have really fantastic resources there 
that's where you get the mining the diamonds re report. You know, it's it's not a great fat report. It's you know, it's it's it's, it's crisply written, so it's okay. accessible. Um, there's other things around how to lead yourself and other people. There, we've we've identified resources that you can click on around you know, leading yourself, leading others. Yeah. Um, so there's that's a really great re resource to go to, um, you know, as well. Yeah, Nick Skeets from Catapult. Thank you very much for your time today. Um, we really appreciate it. I know it's a stressful time for all businesses. Um, just to clarify, so businesses can get up to five thousand dollars worth of 100% funded support through the Regional Business Partners Network and Catapult, Catapult's um, services, including leadership services, can be accessed through this. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's, it's, oh, that, it's a fantastic um, you know, contribution by them to provide organizations and leaders with some support during this time. So head, okay. head, head there and find out what you're, what you're entitled to. Okay, well, that's wonderful. Yeah. Um, Nick, I really appreciate your time and I've really enjoyed talking to you. Thank you for your insights today. It's a pleasure. Uh, yeah. Thank you everyone for joining us.